This is Mrs. Abia with Lesson 18, Sampling Variability and the Effect of Sample Size. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students use data from a random sample to estimate a population mean. Students know that increasing the sample size decreases the sampling variability of the sample mean. Pause the video and copy the essential question. When using a sample mean to estimate a population mean, why do we prefer a larger sample? The previous lessons investigated the statistical question, what is the typical time spent at the gym? By selecting random samples from the population of 800 gym members, two different dot plots of sample means calculated from random samples from the population are displayed below. The first dot plot represents the mean of 20 samples, with each having a sample having five data points. So n equals five. So this mean right here was five people surveyed and the average amount of time. This data plot right here, five people were surveyed and their time spent at the gym was averaged. So these are 20 means taken from five people each. The second dot plot represents a sample of 20 samples with each sample having 15 data points. So this dot right here is from 15 people. Their times were averaged and one dot represents the average of those 15 people. So these sample sizes are larger. These sample sizes are smaller and there were 20 samples taken in each study. Based on the first dot plot, Jill answered the statistical question by indicating the mean time people spent at the gym was between 34 and 78 minutes. There's the 34 minutes, there's the 78 minutes. She decided that a time approximately in the middle of that interval would be her estimate of the mean time 800 people spent at the gym. She estimated 52 minutes. So her lowest data point was 34, her highest data point was 78, and she decided to use 52 as the mean time 800 people would spend at the gym. Scott answered the question using the second dot plot. He indicated that the mean time people spent at the gym was between 41 and 65 minutes. 41 being his lowest mean and 65 being his highest mean. He also selected a time of 52 minutes to answer the question. 52 minutes as the mean time that the people spent at the gym. Describe the differences in the two dot plots. The first dot plot shows more variability in the means. It is more spread out. It has a smaller minimum and a larger maximum. Which dot plot do you feel more confident in using to answer the statistical question? And explain your answer. I feel more confident using the second dot plot. When the sample means are, are tightly clustered, as they are here, they are closer to the actual mean. In general, do you want sampling variability to be large or small? You want the value of the sample statistic to be close to the population characteristic, so you want sampling variability to be small. Please complete exercises 1, 2, and 3 on your own, and we will share the mean in class tomorrow so that we can complete these exercises. We'll go through the directions, and then I would like you to finish the exercise on your own. In the previous lesson, you saw a population of 800 times spent at the gym. You will now select a random sample of size 15 from that population. You will then calculate the sample mean. You will start by selecting a three-digit number from the table of random digits. This is on page 130 in your book. Place the random digit table in front of you. Without looking at the page, place the eraser and your pencil somewhere on the table of random digits. Start using the table of random digits at the digit closest to your eraser. This digit and the following two specify which observation from the population will be the first observation in your sample. Write the value of this observation in the space here. 
Remember to discard any three-digit number that is 800 or larger and use the next three digits from the red random digit table. So you only have to do the eraser activity once and then you just keep moving over three digits at a time to write your numbers. Continue moving in the right in the table of random digits from the point that you reached in exercise one. Each three digit number specifies a value to be selected from the population. Continue in this way until you have selected 14 more values from the population, and this will make 15 values altogether. Write the values of all 15 observations in the space below. So you're using your random digit table on page 130, and you're getting your 15 random digits. Once you have that done, you turn to page 126 in your book, and then you look up in the population table of time at the gym. So your first number, and then what sample does it correspond to? And you write it here. And then you look at your second random digit, find it in the population table, and write the corresponding number here. And continue that until you have all 15 numbers from the population. Then you're going to calculate the mean of your 15 sample values. Write the values of your sample mean below and round your answer to the nearest tenth. Here are the directions for completing this step. What you want to do is you want to add up together all of your sample population numbers here and put the sum in the first space. Then you want to divide by how many numbers there were. And there should be 15 numbers here. You can count them to double check. So your sum divided by 15 and that is going to equal your sample mean. Please do this activity so that we can continue exercises four through six in class tomorrow. Continuing, let's go down here. We're at the bottom of page 139. And I want you to think about this question. Why do you think the sample mean has less variability when the sample size is large? Now, this is a potentially complicated idea. So I want you to listen to this and read it several times. When the sample size is small, you get a small sample. It contains many large values, and this would make the sample mean large, or many small values, which make the sample mean small. But for a larger sample size, it is more likely that the values are equally spread between large and small, and any extreme values are averaged out with the other values to produce a more central value for the sample mean. This is an important concept for this lesson. Exercises seven and eight. Remember that in practice, you only take one sample. Suppose that a statistician plans to take a random sample of size 15 from a population of times spent at the gym and will use the sample mean as an estimate of the population mean based on the dot plot of sample means that your class collected from the population. Approximately, how far can the statistician expect the sample mean to be from the population mean? The actual population mean is 53.9. We will use 54. The procedure to find out how far the statistician can expect the sample mean to be from the population mean is here. The procedure is determined. Find the sum of the distances and divide it by the number of differences. To find the distances, our first distance is 13. The way that you do this is you take the actual mean, which was 54, and you subtract the sample mean. The sample mean was 41. So 54 minus 41 is 13. 54 is the actual mean. And then we're subtracting the sample mean to see what the distance is. We want to find out how far is 44 from 54. So 54 take away 44. And our answer is the distance is 10. Repeat the procedure for the rest of this row. In the next column, we have 56 as our sample mean and we are subtracting 
54. Again, we want to know the difference. So notice that the order has changed here. We have 56 with our sample mean, taking away the actual mean, and so our result is 2. Continue the procedure for the rest of this table. Now we have all of the distances, and we want to know how far can the statistician expect the sample mean to be from the population mean. So we take the sum of the distances and divide it by the number of differences. The sum of the distances, so what we want to do is we want to add these numbers and these numbers and find out what that sum is. Go ahead and pause the video and add that together. I got a sum of 137. Then we want to divide by how many differences that is. Well, we have data here from 20 people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. So our number of differences is 20. 137 divided by 20 is 6.85. Six point eighty five. That is the mean of the distances, or the expected distance of a sample mean from the population mean, is six point eight five minutes. Again, we've answered this question How far can the statistician expect the sample mean to be from the population mean? Based on this data, we expect it to be six point eight five minutes off. Question 8. How would your answer in exercise 7 compare to the equivalent mean of the distances of a sample size of 5? Estimate of the population mean from a smaller sample, say 5, will be farther off the actual population mean. Estimate of the population mean from a larger population, say 15, will be closer to the actual population mean. Exercises 9 through 11. Suppose everyone in your class selected a random sample of size 25 from the population times spent at the gym. What do you think the dot plot of your class's sample means would look like? Make a sketch using the axis. How many data points will the plot have? So we had 27 students record their data, and we've got their means in the table below. How many data points will the dot plot have? Since we had 27 students reply, we will have 27 dots. Also, would you expect this data on the dot plot to be more spread out or less spread out compared to the previous two dot plots where we had five people surveyed at a time to find the mean, 15 people surveyed to find the mean, and in this one it's 25 people surveyed and found their means. So would you expect the dots to be more spread out or less spread out? The sample size of 25 should have less spread than the last sample size of 15. Next, take the data below and put it on the dot plot. So we have an uh, answer of 46, and then you want to go to 46 over here and put a dot and then an answer of 47, and go ahead and put a dot for that. So go ahead and make your dot plot using the numbers in these columns. Pause the video to complete that activity. Question 10. Suppose that a statistician plans to estimate the population mean using a sample set of 25. According to your sketch, or approximately how far can the statistician expect the sample mean to be from the population mean? We are repeating the activity that we did on the previous page, but this time, would you expect your answer to be more than 6.85 or less? What we want to do is find the difference between these means and the actual mean. The procedure, remember, is to subtract from the actual mean of 54. So we had a mean of 54, and we want to subtract the sample mean of 46. 54 minus 46 is 8. Then 
54 minus 47. And that difference is 7. So you want to continue this activity and find all of the differences of the mean. Pause the video and complete that activity. Here are all of our differences. Next, we want to answer the question, approximately how far can the statistician expect the sample mean to be from the population mean? Remember the steps. You'll want to add together all of the differences and then divide by how many differences there were. Pause the video and complete that activity. I got a sum of 92, this set, so I will do 92 divided by 27. 92 divided by 27, rounded to the nearest tenth, is 3.4, and that is the answer to that question. The sample mean will be 3.4 off the population mean. Question 11. Suppose you have a choice of using a sample size of 5, 15, or 25. Which of the three makes the sampling variability of the sample mean the smallest? Why would you choose the sample size that makes the sampling variability of the sample mean as small as possible? Okay, the first one, our choice of 5 or 15 or 25. We know that the sample size of 25 will give us the smallest variability. So we have a large size. The large size will give you the smallest variability. Why is this important? Because it will be the closest to. And therefore the more accurate. To the population mean. The actual population mean. Let's go through that one more time. A sample size of 25, that's the larger size. That will give you the smallest variability. That's important because it will be the closest to the population mean and therefore the most accurate. In this lesson you have learned, a large sample is prefer preferable to a small sample because the sample mean of a larger sample has a smaller sampling variability which means that the sample mean is likely to be closer to the population mean than it would be for a smaller sample. When you increase the sample size, the sample variability of the sample mean decreases, and that's a good thing.